Hello, everyone, and uh, thank you for joining us today for the Capital Insider series, where we're going to take up how e-commerce startups are looking to growth or looking at growth amidst and post pandemic. Now, certainly, um, uh, needless to say, the pandemic has sort of given a large digital push to the Indian economy, much needed also. There was a lot of investment, a lot of new businesses that were getting started in the uh, digital space. But I think with the pandemic, the right push, the right customer uh, adherence to these businesses is now taking place. So we are talking about a very interesting subject today, which is how e-commerce is going to play out, particularly post the pandemic, given the fact that e-commerce has become such a big gainer out of this pandemic in one sense. It's an industry which caught the required push. But nevertheless, there would be some winners and losers in this game. And then there would, of course, be a completely new set of e-commerce players that are likely to emerge from here. So we're joined today by Anirudh Namani, who's the managing partner at the Artha Partner Ventures, and, uh, uh, sorry, Artha Venture Fund. And he is going to talk to, uh, talk or tell us more about, you know, how, what the e-commerce startup for India looks like uh, in the coming years. So welcome, uh, Anirudh, and, you know, we're delighted to have you here as we uh, really sort of figure out and try to, you know, uh, it's been, um, uh, the e-commerce has always been a, a topic of discussion, a topic of debate for the longest years, for the last 10 years, for sure. I can tell you, I've, I've done some countless number of, um, <laughs> you know, on stage and <laughs> on screen webinars on this. But what is really interesting is that uh, the market has completely um, um, changed and uh, it's now looking at a uh, uh, it's now looking uh, very interesting as to how e-commerce is likely to play out in the coming times. And you, of course, have a great portfolio of e-commerce companies yourself. So, you know, let me start with a question that given the pandemic is now looking on the receiving side, while of course the numbers are growing, but still that's what the government is hoping that now they will grow and sort of come down. So how do you think the digital businesses are going to, particularly in e-commerce, are going to pave out? Do you think, you know, there, I mean, when the pandemic started and we were all locked down, there was a huge rush for webinars and huge use of Zoom while it's not still come down, but it's probably come down than what it used to be. See, do you think, do you think that e-commerce might go through such trajectory or do you think it's only going to now increase? You know, thank you, Ritu, so much for having me. And, you know, thank you everyone for that that, that is joining in. Uh, yeah, I think we're obviously going through some unprecedented times, and I, I think this is the most overused word of the last six months. Uh, but <laughs> what what I would say is that see what us as investors we typically invest in VC for the next ten years, right? And we're saying okay, what's going to happen over ten years? And what I think has happened because of this pandemic and the lockdowns is that what we were expecting to happen in 2025 is probably happening in 2021. And the reason for that is that you know that this there's something known as a law of diffusion diffusion of innovation right and it takes time for penetration to happen where the vast majority of people start doing something so what what the law says hmm. is that you know you can divide 100% of market into 16% as early adopters 16% as your as your uh, you know or, or the center part of the market which would be roughly about 64% right would be people that that are your early majority and late majority and then the remaining are your stragglers right and those stragglers don't worry about them because those guys are not the market. So what happens in this is that typically we would have expected that the majority of people that would be using digital would have taken another four to five years to happen, right? But what's, what we're seeing now is that that majority suddenly started adopting digital much faster than we had expected. And so today the number of e-commerce yeah, users in India or e-commerce transactors in India is about 160 million. In VC less than three years ago, we were talking about 50 million. Now we're talking about 150, yeah. 200 million, right? And, and, and as we go ahead, I, do, I see this number probably going up to as high as maybe you know, 300 or 400 million in the next three or four years. Now, as that happens, obviously the, obviously the market is now growing up exponentially. And all that money that these offline brands and the, you know, the, the, the guys that set up these distribution systems over, the, over so many years, all of that that was spent suddenly, they're saying that you know, the new brands are saying, we don't need their offline distribution. We can go straight online, build a brand, and then when we get big enough, we'll go offline when we need it, right? Yeah. And, and, and I think all of that has just happened so quickly and so fast, right? That, that, that's why I'm calling it unprecedented. We're just seeing, I, I think we're seeing the dreams of the VC, VCs play out right now. <laughs> that's, what I would say. that's what I would say. Yeah, so it's a good time for VCs in that sense, you know, because it's, they're now getting to pick and choose 
uh, and the the way they want to, to see e-commerce is now coming alive. <clears throat> you know, um, I don't know, e-commerce itself is now taking uh, um, uh, precedence in different ways today in the market. You know, I've I've heard of the term social commerce. I have turned on. I mean, I've been talking to brands in physical space who've used extensively WhatsApp commerce during these times for selling out their merchandise. And then, of course, you know, uh, we also talk about omni-channel commerce where you're doing stores as well as digital. There's a whole lot of different kind of e-commerce branching um, branches that have started happening out. So what is your take on, you know, what, what is going to be the e-commerce of uh, the future? What kind of e-commerce is likely to grow in the coming times? And where would you bet your money on it? I mean, you know, there is a Misha which is almost looking as good as probably the early days of Flipkart today. See, uh, the, the key word is obviously commerce at the end of it, right? That, that, that commerce means that transactions need to happen. So in, in, in many ways, you know, Misho to the world, and again, they, they bring a very different flavor to the market. Uh, but if you ask me where the real value is going to be, it's probably direct to consumer, right? And, 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 and for that, while there'll be, it's important for people to have platforms, right? And people have created platforms like a purple where we're investors in that platform. But eventually the value of that platform is now getting driven by its own private labeling, right? And, and that's going to be the future. Like if I, look, if I look at Walmart, for example, the world's largest retailer, as they call it, uh, most people don't, may not know that, that they also have their own private label brand called Great Value that drives almost $28 billion a year in sales. There are 18 brands that do a billion dollars a year in sales themselves, right? So when, when there is such a, the world's largest retailer has to also have its own private label besides selling other brands, right? It's, it's a message to everyone trying to do e-commerce that eventually the valuation is going to come from selling your own stuff, right? Because no matter how much you sell for other people, there's only going to be a limited amount of margin you can get out of that, right? The real margin, the real customer loyalty and, and, and the real recall is not going to come by saying, you know, I bought off Misho. Is going to be that Misho's brand was sold on Misho, right? And I think that's what, if you look at everybody, right? Even Flipkart, Amazon Basics, all of these guys are creating their own brands to sell on their own platform. Sure. So, I mean, you mentioned uh, the term D2C and I was going to come to it, which is direct to consumer brands. And we've seen a big upsurge, particularly if I look at in uh, FMCG, in food, uh, in health and beauty and wellness category, you you know, there have been multiple brands which have come in and they, they like across categories, you know, there's um, um, Ayurveda is being played out in a very large way today, which is of course a very Indian thing as well. So do you think uh, uh, the, D2, D, the D2C market is likely to see large growth? There are going to be brands which are going to be really big. Is there a unicorn story somewhere in D2C or do you think it's more the product can only sort of um, do a limited size of business. And also, you know, I would love for you to tell us that, is it a product story D2C or is it a product plus service story somewhere? What, what could largely make the, the D2C market bigger? So I will first of all say that I'd never look at a company whether it's going to be unicorn or not, right? What I'm really interested in, in in any company is that how much money can the company generate for itself and what multiple investment is it going to give me? Right. If you become a unicorn and I only made 10x on the investment, I'll not be very happy versus if you became 100 million and I made 100x on the investment. Right. So for me, it doesn't really matter whether you're a unicorn or not. But to the other question, you know, as per where D2C is headed and what is going to play out. So I, I think we need to also think that D2C is going to be a suite of products rather than, rather than just one product. Right. And, and I think the winner, there are going to be many winners in, in, in this. Uh, where, and, and there is a massive market out there. So what, see, what essentially has happened is first Geo, you know, Geo reduced the access to internet rates to, we have the lowest internet rates in the world, right? We are sitting at $0.25 uh, dollars per gigabyte in India, right? Versus the world pays about $5 or higher. And then we've got GST, which means now we can transport goods from any state to any state, right? And it is, it is easier to now transact for an Indian within India versus Pele, it was, there used to be a market where it was cheaper for you to export something to Dubai and then import it back to Mumbai, right? Rather than, rather than sending something from Trivandrum to Mumbai directly, right? So, so I, I think these things and then what's happening with D2C today and the, and the whole pandemic is, is, is just made it much easier for somebody with, with an Amazon seller account and a GSC number to now start transacting online, 
right this was not there earlier and and i think this this is the story that is going to play out like if you're looking at d2c and you're you're talking about what's going to get big the the biggest part is going to be can you first get the sales and if you want to drive valuation for your company can you get those sales back on your website so you can use amazon you can utilize a flipkart you can utilize purple you can utilize nike all these platforms to get your initial customers on board because the customers are coming there any which ways for products but eventually how many of them are going to come back to your own website and transact through your own website that is what is going to drive valuation if in in that sense right and and i would say that any self respecting brand thinking that we're going to make it big should should be targeting at least 50% of their of the sales coming from their own platform right or which is their own website uh, and and the remaining 50% could be through you know these distributors uh, whether it is online or offline so is it i mean so you you would say that within the product versus platform uh, story it's the platform that is going to win and product is something you need to keep on adding absolutely at the end of the day the platform is going to win because people are going to come there for more than one thing right and it's it's the same thing with the app story right we had so many apps now somebody wants you to wants you to download another app you're going to groan about it right yet take one more app right today my phone has over 150 apps right how many apps can i really open and if i really go back and look at it there's probably just 15 or 20 apps that i really use everything That's else use, like yeah. you know yesterday i was just going through like i like i still have this app i don't use it right and that's the thing how many web how, how many different uh, websites are you going to have to discover products right but once i think like let's say if you get used to a certain brand of nutraceuticals right so you might buy it a few times on amazon right but then you might you know can you can the nutraceutical brand actually bring you back to their own website through a discount or through some scheme and say i can provide you better service at a cheaper price through my own website and if you can do that i think that's where the valuation drive will happen within the direct to consumer space what would be uh, what would you bet on today i mean i know you've invested in purple which is largely into beauty space but i mean if you were to look into other categories where would you want to put a dollar i i think the cosmetics place is still open it there's a lot of money to be made over there i think uh, you know especially like so we were investors in beardo for example we were investors in coolberg which is you know creating a non alcoholic beer and i even think there is a good space even in alcohol right we're still used to uh, the certain brands that are out there and vera was the only uh, other recognizable brand i mean there has a few here and there but vera is really probably the craft beer brand that we've talked about but there is such a huge space you know I- india consumes 40% of the world's whiskey right so there's a huge potential over there to create a really amazing whiskey brand and and we take it to the world quite honestly uh and and i think that that if you ask me is going to be uh you know places where we are looking for for uh, investment opportunities right in all these offbeat places and, and i'm not just using alcohol as an example but there are so many other categories out there which are ripe for dis- disruption because no innovation has taken place there uh, for a very long time so you mean beverages you feel is certainly a category to look at you said non alcoholic beer i think i've only started seeing it in the last one to two years i've now seen a lot of indian wines on indian uh, retail shelves which were not there earlier so you think beverages itself is a big story waiting to happen absolutely and and and, and also because earlier as a beverage right you were concerned about let's say even like a raw pressies in my anti portfolio right and the reason was that when they came out gst was not there that could take days maybe even weeks right because by the time you got to the octroi and the border checks right it would the juice would probably be invalid right for for consumption that has completely changed right and 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 now because people are transacting online you've got 16 to 18 crore people today that want to buy online that means you don't have to create the offline distributions anymore that which was the early requirement right mm-hmm. if i want to beverages how am i going to like if i take a 12 uh, bottle crate it's pretty heavy to send by uh, by courier right but today that's no longer a problem that's no longer an issue today mm-hmm. but it was an issue maybe 8 years ago so i think that space is right i think that the incumbents have been you know uh, peddling the same stuff for a very long time right and that there there is a massive space for creating something new new right like like a swami tonics right it's just come and doing something very unique with tonic uh, which is you know we only had a couple of options for so many years 
Great. You know, now another area which I want to touch upon today is that, you know, overall, um, whether it's in um, direct to consumer brands, e commerce businesses, or even retail businesses, which is physical retail, it, it, the gestation period is really long. I mean, you know, seven to nine, 10 years is something one has to take into being. Now, on the other hand, when you, and particularly from an investor's lens, when you look at an AI company or you look at a, uh, you know, a virtual VR company, you see that the business turnaround time is about two two years. And, you know, almost a company which started two or three years back has almost become a unicorn or a near unicorn today. So given the fact that, you know, it takes such a long time to build, and not that I'm saying that it, it doesn't get built, it does get built, but it's just that, you know, the time so far, I mean, that's what the thesis say, that so far the time taken in building a company in this category is very, very large. So as an investor, how do you weigh these two things together? I mean, how do you sort of see that, okay, look, I'm going to have to put my money for nine years and I'm not, I'm for sure, I know that it's not going to be in a, in a AI company, but rather it's in an uh, e-commerce company. So how, how do you sort of, um, and you and your, of course, investors who are behind the fund, how do you sort of take that decision um, to say that, okay, this is the way we'll go? No, it's a great question. See, it's, there's a common misconception you could say that, that, you know, how long does it take to win, right? But the first guy, the first angel investor in Flipkart who wrote a check in 2008 for 10 lakh rupees walked away with one, 130 crore rupees in 2018. So the size of the win was right. massive, right? And, and And I think that's what we should also remember that it's not just about the win, it's about the size. In VC, it's all about size. Right, out of ten companies, you're right. gonna have five companies that shut down. You're gonna have two or three that will that will probably fizzle out, or or you know just probably return how much you put into them. One will give you a decent return. One will give you a fantastic return. Now that fantastic return company has to be massive, and, and the misconception that that arises is that AI or these uh, enterprise SaaS companies just multiply faster. I can tell you that as an investor in both sides, right, there is no mathematics to it. It it really is about traction. So at the end of the day, the company that gains the fastest traction will get the fastest valuation multiples also. So if I look at an Exotel, which is in our portfolio, it is doing so fantastically well. It hasn't raised a single round of capital in the last eight years, right? And today their revenue mm -hmm. numbers are in, you know, in, in triple digit crores, right? If you talk about, and on the other hand, you could have a purple, right? That has had its own, own, own pathway. And today obviously is doing extremely well, but there were many times that purple offered us an exit, right? We didn't take it. Even today, there are, there are people that want to buy purple shares. We don't want to exit. So the point is, I'm holding on because I'm holding on for that massive exit. But otherwise, if I wanted, I could have taken a 40x, 50x at any time in this company's history and, and, and moved out. But I think that purple is going to become a unicorn or, or, or rather not a unicorn, but it's an IPO candidate, in my opinion. And therefore, I'm waiting mm -hmm. for that day because mm -hmm. that, that is when my 10 lakh rupees will become 130 crores. Right? And, and that size yeah. of victory is what I'm looking for Right at the end of the day. So, so I think in both, in both, there are examples of pluses and minuses. It's just a conception that it takes seven to 10 years, but honestly, within three of, if a company has not raised a round in three years, enterprise SaaS or otherwise, and it's not getting replaced by customer capital, which is that revenues are, are big, that company is not going to do well in any which case, whether it is enterprise SaaS or whether it is AI or whether it is, uh, uh, you know, consumer tech. But eventually, I mean, you know, as an investor, you also have to bet on uh, the e-commerce company being able to gain customers faster so that they can, you know, therefore grow so much faster. I mean, I know for e-commerce earlier, that was not the case. The investor lenses were a little different to say that, okay, we'll build the platform first and then the customer will come. But today, I mean, are you sort of shortening that curve there and you'd say that, okay, how can we reduce the burn and make sure that, you know, the customer journey is uh, becoming shorter. Uh, the 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 journey to reaching out the customer is becoming shorter, and therefore we are able to grow the startup as much faster. Yeah, I mean, I, I think in any which case, Ritu, I I don't like companies that have negative yeah, negative unit economics, right? Your your uh, if you're selling something uh, for a price below what you have bought it for, right? Uh, that that company is not creating any value in the first place, right? And 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 therefore is not even mm. able to communicate value to its customer base, right? Uh, mm. And 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 in in that case, I would be very clear, right? That the companies that are burning money 
right at a operating level we don't invest in them period and it has happened i mean mm, this is i mm. think been in our portfolio for a very long time net burn typically comes from investing in in capital assets and now earlier for a flipkart as we discussed you know before the before we started was that that was because they were investing in the cap in the capex that wasn't there in the country right which is like where are the hubs where is, where is the uh, overnight delivery where are, where are, where is all of this uh, cash on delivery network that is created nothing was there they created that so therefore they had to spend all this money that was not in the operating side it was on the tech side uh, or or the capex side today you're going to spend money in 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 basically saying okay where is my customer base where can i find it how do i create a hook that it comes back to me again and again and there is some marketing capital you have to put in over there right but it cannot be forever it cannot be a line item that says you know what i'm going to spend uh, 25% of my sales on marketing regardless of what is going to happen right and that's where the companies falter because that same percentage which look very small at 2 lakh 2 crore let's say 2 crore arr you are spending 25% on marketing 50 lakhs when it's mm. 200 crore mm. it cannot be 50 crore right it has to it come is. down to maybe 10 crore or something right otherwise if you're always spending a huge percentage of your income on marketing right then you don't really know what you're marketing to right that the eventually that cost has to come down because repeatability brand awareness you know your your message getting out there all of those things are going to drive direct and organic sales right and 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 that's what company should be focusing on that that what is my product market fit right have i achieved it how many of my customer base is saying if 40% or more of my customer base today says that without my product their life would be significantly impacted in a negative way i am achieving product market fit right and once i have product market fit my 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 marketing expenses are going to go down any which way and if that is not happening mm-hmm. and i'm not achieving that then i'm not then i'm i'm just out there you know blindly throwing money at things right and i'm not really solving a problem and or i don't even know who i'm solving the problem for which is even worse right um you know in the last few years what i have noticed is that for most e-commerce brands they went into a digital policy wherein you know they had stores and they also had a e-commerce website and they were servicing on the ground to the customers i mean you look at and and they become big i mean look at the lens cart it's a, it's a great story you know which has managed to do both product and stores as well as a website that is unique in its experience so i mean you look at nike also um, and i mean they are also going the same route so do you feel that probably for pure play e-commerce companies i mean they started as a digital native but if i mean now also post the pandemic also it's going to be a physical plus or a store plus a website or a digital place together that is going to keep winning or do you think it's only going to be e-commerce from here see i do believe that and there is a possibility you go online and then go offline right and that 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 need gets to be driven by the business now lens cart i can understand because you know uh, spectacles or glasses are a touch and feel thing right it may not be possible for everything that way like obviously pepper fry went on, online then is then created their stores uh, however i believe very strongly that that brand should not go offline retailer first and then try to go online because the offline mm-hmm. retailer has unfortunately got a lot of things working against you first of all they take a large chunk of your sales right 35% 40% commission is a given secondly you have no right. idea who bought it right because because they are never going to share the list of customers who bought that item so you have no you spent 40% getting a customer right but that is really just for the real estate that this guy has got right whether it is a godrej nishas basket or whoever right right but you did you have no idea which customer segment bought your item and why and if you have not learned that in the earlier rounds trust me the later rounds are as it is screwed right because you don't know what your customer who your customer is and why they are buying which is why, what online solves for you online solves that problem that you know who's buying you know what they're buying it for because you can you know put put enough tracking cookies to figure that out and therefore even if you're spending 40% same amount you're spending offline as you would online right you would end up learning a lot more about your customer which is the real key for spending all this money right now once you've built a strong enough base online and then you come offline you can probably get better terms because now a godrej nature's basket wants you versus you want them you know and in so many cases i've seen obviously all these offline retailers have private label brands of their own and many times when you have a successful brand that you've launched over there 
they'll get a private label of their own to replace you eventually as well because they know you're also not manufacturing it is all contract manufactured so you have to play all of these out when you're as as strategically as a founder and think you know what i should probably go online it is very simple now you can get a warehouse now you can get warehouses on demand you can get an amazon seller account i can sell it over there i can then build a website and bring sales to my side using shopify if i can do all of that and it can happen in a few lakhs it doesn't require tons of money so why go to offline retailer trying to convince them you have to pay them listing fees you have to pay them to figure out where in the store your your product is going to get face uh, face time if instead of doing all of that for 10 15 lakhs you could just go out there and start selling why not do that yeah i agree but i mean eventually you know people uh, i mean i mean i was just reading about the uae market and uh, one of the most aggressive retailers who's opening big stores over there is lulu hypermarket um because you know uh, they they feel the customer today is on the contrary i mean i can tell you that in the pandemic i have done more trips to a grocery store than i was doing otherwise because you know uh, there were for things but, you couldn't find so but part of it was also little because we, there was no delivery happening right I, if i look at look right. at the number of deliveries below my building today right it is way higher than what it was pre pandemic you know so in in that sense that, that sure. there is a significant shift because uh, and unfortunately this is because also the virus you just don't know how it's spreading right so do you really want to go mm. to a hypermarket today and stand next to somebody you don't know and then and then land up getting an infection coming back home and probably passing it on to someone else right and and i think that yeah. is what is driving people to buy online right that's why swiggy is doing so yeah. well in 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 the post pandemic world compared to what it was doing earlier and we have restaurant investments as well so so in that sense i think at least for the next year i don't see this behavior really changing in a big way right yes you will have people that still have to go to the store and and and, and the segment of market will still do that right but i think a large chunk of the of the market that owns a smartphone today is moving and almost 25 30% of the market is already transiting online and that number will only go higher as these as these coronavirus numbers keep on going you know into if they hit the crore mark you can imagine how many people would rather not go outside than sit inside their home and and, and transact right it's just is a safer sure we have a question here from uh, uh, aman pandey can we give aman pandey the mic he can he can ask it himself actually I'm going to go on. Please unmute before you are. Yeah, go on. Hello. We hi, can hear you. Hi, hi, sir. So, uh, our startup, I have uh, raised a question. Like, we are making a platform for the uh, vendors and uh, the freelancers who are related to uh, event industry and the entertainment industry. Like, they are actors, singers, and they they don't have a specific platform. to uh, uh, get the jobs or to get the freelance events and all this thing so we are making a platform for them uh, it's more like to play, uh, more like to linkedin already where people can post uh, updates uh, post jobs get jobs and uh, for that uh, uh, the development thing uh, it requires lot of capital like uh, if we are uh, we need a mvp of that product to show the investors to show the uh for that it requires lot of capital like 5 lakh for the only development goes so how to go with that if we don't have funds so, uh, that much so let let's I put it in a different way can, can yeah, are you are you sure you can get uh, gigs right yes, for yes, for I'm the act sure. you can yes yes i'm very sure i have so yeah then I, do I'm, very simply let's, let's do this uh, if you if you are so sure about getting gigs okay and you don't have the money to build a platform yeah. today take some of these guys and close the transactions offline today right by finding people I'm, that I'm are still doing this i'm still doing ah, so as a coordinator money from that yeah. utilize that money that you earn which is customer capital to build the online portal which is the mvp it doesn't have to be fancy remember no mvp needs to be fancy the uh, mvp just needs to work yeah. right yeah because MVP, so I, if you I'm look fancy. at oyo's first website when we invested right it was a very rickety website obviously compared to today when they've got all this funding and massive team and all that the website looks you know i mean a, a gazillion times better but initially just the fact that he had a website that was operating and there was revenues coming through that website that was enough to invest into oyo with right and 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 i think 5 lakhs is 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 a, is a pretty hefty amount but that's probably because you're trying to make it very nice and fancy with all widgets today try not to do that 
try to make it as simple as possible even if it is a wordpress template that you're using to get started and the transaction all you're doing is getting demand online having them fill out a form and contacting them offline to close the transaction it is good enough yeah i'm still doing this things because i'm i'm a coordinator for last 6 to 7 years as uh, the problem is like uh, i have lot of database like their contacts their mail id uh, suppose uh, someone has event and he was looking for a singer so what i do i manage them for uh, for them and uh, I, i i i drop the messages for the singer suppose i have 10 singers and i i uh, individually drop a uh, message so some are uh, responding some are not responding and there is a problem of coordinating with them yeah sure so, and that uh, is going to be a problem regardless thing right? offline okay thanks so much yeah. i think so, uh, uh, you'll probably need to take this one to one this is becoming a very long discussion so are there any parting thoughts you want to give to amman no well, I, i would say, again like like i would say that that see the 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 last point you were saying that that it is going to be difficult to contact this but that's going to be difficult regardless right but at the end of the day yeah. remember you just need to create a working prototype you need to create a mvp you need to show that it works if you don't have the money do consultancy do it offline just just raise money uh, se- selling and use customer capital to build your website i mean the greatest example is wow momos right the guys built 40 restaurants from customer capital before ever raising an angel round right and they started with 11000 rupees and look at whether brand is valued today so choice is yours of how to raise the capital sure okay. we'll give it to shiva shankar uh, he's also got a question here shiva please unmute hi uh, is it audible go on audible yes okay yeah, thank you yeah. thank hi, you Rata. thank you very good morning and sorry very good afternoon i got you know a little bit of a skeptical question here and i think we are keep watching what jio is doing in the market with the digital space uh, like combining and a whole lot of big guys into this space uh, somewhere i think all the starters when i am into the ecosystem uh, i'm sensing you know fear of you know where these businesses are taking them and then uh, losing out for the big guys or maybe you know they are not having they need to compete in a tough tight space with uh, big guys so Where is there a space is going to be available for the new entrants and these guys are really you know making you know a lot of a noise on that. So where 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 this is heading towards that? Shiva, so if you look at the history of entrepreneurship, right? I think we've dealt with this question so many times in so many decades. Right before Geo, the you know there was a time when people believed that Walmart was too big or Exxon Mobil was too big. and so on and so forth every see every every business has its uh, cycle uh, so so to your question that is there going to be space there is always going to be space right that's the key about entrepreneurship that it always finds a blue ocean in a red sea right and 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 i think you leave it to the entrepreneur to figure out what it is i mean if you notice the snowflake ipo that happened i think yes yesterday it's already up 100% in a day right so there's always going to be space otherwise amazon would have owned the entire world market the, because of its sheer size mm. but there's always going to be a new frontier there's always going to be a new space that uh, that entrepreneurs need to explore and 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 finally enough entrepreneurs are exploring space as an option i absolutely i think i uh, watch for that i think we we did indeed started uh, promoting one of the uh, uh, local uh, amazon kind of things basically you know Uh, democratizing the in you know, a digital space as well as the uh, uh, market space so highly local and hyper local kind of a thing and we have done a trial at least in uh, three different cities and then and also tier 2 and uh, towns uh, remarkable response because given a kind of a, a scenarios and then the restrictions of the moments uh, the response is quite good so probably i'll reach out and then and i'll share our uh, story very shortly and then see and where we can take it to awesome. the awesome looking yes, forward sir. to hearing more about it yeah thank you thank you sure So, uh, you know, I know one question I would love for you to tell us is that what, how is it that you have been sort of advising your own portfolio startup during this time? I mean, you know, I'm sure some of them would have done very well given the fact that you have a massive e-commerce investment, but some would obviously be seen as, uh, you know, non-frugal investment um, uh, spent by the customer. So therefore, he doesn't want to at least right now um, uh, put his dollar over there. So, how is it that you are advising your startups to hang on, to stay strong, to keep the business going, and you know, not essentially uh, 
sort of we get or get carried away by the market sentiment which is obviously not the highest or the most positive at this point of time so again different startups i'll talk specifically about e-commerce startups right now i i think uh, and especially because they're selling digitally right so there was a time when we started the pandemic we obviously you know had a we had a 21 point action plan for all our startups to corona proof themselves uh, and a lot of that advice was reduce your fixed expenses you know cut all discretionary spending let people go if they if they are not aligned with a long term business plan right or or with the rather the short term business plan for, for for that time uh, because we just didn't know how we're going to come out of this entire lockdown right this was obviously none of at least i have never seen a lockdown in my lifetime uh, so many of us don't really know right how how this is going to uh, this is going to uh, pan out but now now that this entire lockdowns are opening and you're seeing the kind of traction that is there in the digital economy we're telling them to go big right and and i'm telling my founder that if if you figured out your unit economics and you know how to sell and you know what your target customer is this is the time to really go large because by the time offline distribution comes back online right can you get these customers to permanently shift their uh their their you know transaction behavior online and if you can do that i think there's such a huge market available let me think about it there's in india today that we only 1.6% of our retail sales comes from online 1.6% in the us is 16% right and and india has always you know galloped through these kind of things right so i i think there's a huge huge potential available we've got about a year year and a half as if you're a d2c brand uh, or you're on the digital economy side to you know really upend the uh, the offline player because you know it's going to take them that much time to come back online sure but i mean you know now given the fact that we are not in a lockdown now but nevertheless people are working from home how is the action point uh, how are the action points different today versus what they were let's say in april when we were in a very very strict lockdown so right now of course you know um, there is of course needless to say there is unemployment today which is higher than what it has been for india in many many years so therefore any way customer spend is going to be less the customer is going to be very tight with his money so how do we sort of get out of that phase this is the second phase that has come the first phase was of course that, you know we are in lockdown and everything is stopped now second phase is customer is not ready to sort of go out and start spending as much so what then there are two kinds of customers there as well to be honest right there is also people that are getting hired because a lot of these startups have got funded and they've done mega rounds they're out there hiring there's a hiring spree right now in bangalore right for example because everybody's sure. you know there's so much money now getting pumped in so there is people who are getting hired as well but i i, I do understand when you're saying that there is that there is that middle economy that hasn't really come into mm. the digital side which is which is the one that is impacted the most right but even there you know you've got these reskilling companies you've got these startups uh, startups who are creating these online platforms this let me reskill you as a developer or reskill you into into some way where you can be part of this gig economy again mm. right and start earning mm. money look mm. at the drivers out there right there's going to be 300000 mm. 400000 drivers that are going to get required for all the deliveries that that are, that are required so you know it's always it it is is the way do you see the glass half full or half empty i think that's 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 really the question that we are looking at over here uh, but yeah when it comes to now let me tell you that what we've realized during this during this lockdown and because of this work from home scenario that the ceos of large companies have so much more time than they did when they were traveling around everywhere right and and we're able to actually tap into this potential and it's been amazing right we've been able to get through like the we just did yesterday a showcase of six of our startups to the largest financial services player in india where their entire c suite was sitting on the presentation for 2 hours right yes, yeah pre pandemic putting five of those people into a room would have been impossible right today is easy because everybody can do it on zoom so so in in that sense you know closing a transaction is so much more faster today because this whole indian mindset ki unless i meet you unless i shake your hand unless i know you i will not sign on paper or i will not do a transaction all of that has gone for a toss right today people are signing term sheets we signed up lps you know crores of investment is happening without people actually meeting so that is a permanent shift in oh, we lost your voice anil can you hear me now oh uh, yeah yeah we can sorry let me just so you know um Uh, so we've just got a question just from Bhu. Uh, 
Uh, so he says, uh, how do you see any new age conglomerates coming up in the future? At least in the FMCG space, most D2C consumer brands exits are currently established strategies. Many of them coming up. Yeah, I think Nike, all these guys are going to become major FMCG, FMCG players. Obviously, I'm, I'm, uh, I keep them back to purple for that reason mm -hmm. because I think you know the way the brand has grown has become is is really I'm more excited about the way it's grown than the money I'm going to make from it, right? Uh, and in in that sense, um, there's a lot of space available in in multiple different places. You know, I I can't just tell you that okay, this is what to do over here or this is what to do over there. That's the entrepreneur's job, but uh, to find find found find out that space. But I personally believe again, beverages space is, is really ripe for for disruption. Even the confectionery space is ripe for dis disruption. You know, chocolates, uh, chocolate space. All of these places, I I can find a player which has a massive market available in India. Uh, which they can transact on. Household sure. supplies, right? I mean, think about think about it. There's just so much space available. Just tell me, tell me, take a rock, throw it at some place. You'll find an opportunity to make a billion dollar company. <laughs> yeah, oh, and aren't we all looking forward to more of them? <laughs> um, so you know, uh, you mentioned that you know it's so much easier today to probably uh, for startups to go out and present uh, because then you don't have to really fly anywhere or physically go there for a meeting. So, uh, I mean, how do you think uh, in e-commerce, I would say particularly, uh, and this is something I have noticed, is that it has been less on the receiving end of capital, while there are lots of other companies, you know, whether it's in gaming, gaming particularly, I would say, has got a lot of funding in this pandemic. Um, and then there is AI, and then there's a whole load of deep tech that is getting a lot of funding. Health tech, ed tech has, of course, again, been another winner. But e-commerce, I felt, has not probably been um, getting as much dollar value as um, the rest of the uh, technology side. So is there, do you think, any specific reason for it? Um, and I mean, do you think maybe another two months down the line, that is, the, so, people, so investors are weighing this up and maybe two months down the line, it's going to be more, um, um, work out more on the e-commerce side? Actually, Ritu, I think the, the thing is that most of the founders don't want to raise money, honestly. Mm -hmm. Many of these founders, and without getting into names and specifics, have actually become profitable. They're actually generating so much cash in today's day and age that, that quite honestly, they don't want to raise money. They're saying, listen, I, why can't I just use this, use this capital that I have and, and grow my sales, right? And then get a higher valuation in the future. You know, and sure. this is, these are quite active discussions that we're, we're actually facing where one of the companies we're investing in today, because we signed a term sheet pre-pandemic, right? That's why we're able to complete the transaction. Otherwise, the sales have, are up 4x during the pandemic. Like post-pandemic, what the number they had in Feb, they're already 4x of that today. And it, it is not just one of them. There is This is a story in many of them, you know? And I think that's right. why you're not seeing so much over there. This has now become a market where it has gone from an investor's market to a founder's market. Now the founder will decide whether he wants money or not. Because another form of investing or another form of money he can raise is debt. Because now that he can see the cycle working, right? Where he can see, okay, if I buy, if I put in money, I can return the money back in three months. Why should I dilute my equity position? And there are so many venture debt funds out there and even NBFC sitting on capital. We willing to give it out. If I can raise capital even at 15%, isn't it cheaper than giving out equity where the expectation of the investor is probably 35-40%, right? And keep it for myself as the founder or as the shareholder of the company. And I think that's what's happening. That's why you're not seeing uh, all the rounds have happened. I would not say nothing has happened, but rounds have happened. But actually speaking, they don't need the money. They're not looking for money. So you have to go and convince them, they are take my money. Otherwise, they don't want it. Sure. And have you been able to do some investments during this time, during the last uh, six odd months? Uh, we've been, yeah, I, I, we've been more more busy in the last four months than we were in the first two or three months of the pandemic because we were really were focusing on 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 saving what was there uh, in the portfolio. But in the last four months, we uh, so we've completed uh, we've got seven rounds that we've done. We've done two rounds within the portfolio. We've completed the investment, mm. which is you know Dalchini. We've completed the second one we're about to announce. Uh, we've completed a round in Piggy Ride, which is a fresh investment we made. And there are four other investments that we are currently uh, in, at documentation stage. So you should be listening to, you know, in the next 40, 45 to 60 days, you'll probably hear, you know, uh, all these announcements uh, of the rounds that have happened. 
sure and we're absolutely looking to consuming those things as well <laughs> not <laughs> just dating that about that <laughs> now looking forward i i, I think <laughs> Thank you i've so always much. i've always believed that uh, the best time to invest is in a bust when nobody else is investing because that's the best time to to find amazing deals at at amazing prices and that's why i'm super excited yeah me too so thank you very much for joining us today and i know that i think this is a great talk and you know i realized that whatever whenever i have had a chat on e-commerce with an investor it always gets into a debate because you know there's so many things that get always sort of get into a conflict of discussion but i think very interesting times and you right i you said earlier that a lot of today it's better to be online and then go offline if you have to but from going from offline to online as i'm realizing and talking to a lot of uh, uh physical or store only brands it's it's extremely tough for them to sort of pave out a complete uh, way as to how they will go online and create that kind of business um so this talk is actually going to be there on facebook live for anybody who has more questions they want to ask from anirudh i'm sure uh, he'll give us 5 minutes of his time and probably take uh, and answer those questions so keep those questions coming on facebook live and we look forward to more such talks and particularly anirudh we would love to talk to you next time holding those products and actually having the taste of that beverage um you know that you were talking about the non alcoholic beer and other things and uh, you know it, it would be um, so much better to see you in person rather than on a screen when we do absolutely this absolutely i i i think sooner <laughs> sooner than later i i love traveling absolutely, so surely for so, sure <laughs> yeah yeah hopefully uh, you know we we are able to travel very quickly and yeah look, looking forward to doing this physically next time thank you thank you very much uh, anil and uh, look forward to seeing you again thank you so much for your time ritu and thank you everyone who was logged in bye